Does your friends on social media know that you're a Christian, or do you keep it quiet so that you can just blend in, fit in the crowd, be a part of it? Make your faith known. Lot kept his faith quiet. He was ashamed of it, and he wanted to be a part of this whole new experience. Despite the wrong choices that brought Lot to Sodom, nevertheless, he was there. Never had a group of people needed more to hear of, of righteous, loving God. I can think of an America that needs the same thing today, amen? Needed more to hear of a righteous, loving God. Lot's faith in Jehovah God was kept quiet. Perhaps he was afraid if he shared his faith, it would hinder his rise to prominence. We do know that later when the angels came to search for just 10 righteous men, the number of righteous men Abraham had asked God to spare Sodom for, none but Lot, his wife, and just two of his daughters could be found. Not even his son-in-laws had been reached for God. Didn't even witness to his family, his, his, his son-in-laws. Looks like he had maybe four daughters and didn't even talk to his two son-in-laws about the Lord. And when he came to rescue them from the, the incoming destruction, they laughed and mocked at him. Thought he was mocking them. Why? Because he had no testimony with his family. I don't ever want to get to that place. Because guess what? The blood of those people are going to be on Lot's hands someday. And he's going to stand before God because he didn't speak out for the Lord. Because he just wanted to blend in. And Christian, I beg of you, don't blend in. Stand out. All right. And then uh, we're going on. Uh, what's that end of that? The choices we, determ the choices we make determine the outcome of our life. Success or ruin, what will you choose? And then you're not a teenager, but you're, 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 you're an adult, David. All right. So going on to the, the page number two, handout number two right here. The terrible cost of Lot's faulty philosophy. The terrible cost of Lot's faulty philosophy. Can a righteous man find happiness immersed in worldliness? Lot believed that as of a child of God, it was not necessary to separate yourself from the world. This faulty philosophy came with a great price. Sin is pleasurable for a what? Season, but there is always a reaping. There is always a reaping. So here's some, uh, here's the, some of the things that it cost him. Look at this right here. Worldliness cost Lot his fellowship with God. Fel Lot. Lot's, uh, well, go up to the top right here. Lot's worldliness cost him everything. That's the, that's point, uh, the, the top one, Lot's worldliness. And I'm going to go to Galatians because that is a good passage real quick. I'll read that. So put in Lot's worldliness. Uh, and then 6, 7 says this, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also what? Reap. You, you, <laughs> You're not going to make a mockery of God, Christian, living whatever way you want and expecting nothing to happen as a result. I mean, that's just like the little kid that throws a temper tantrum in, in Walmart in front of his parents. What is he doing? He's making a mockery of his parents. He's mocking them, basically saying, you're not going to do anything about it. So he's is he not? He's mocking them. He's mocking them because he does not respect them. And guess what? I'll tell you this right here. The little kid may get away with it in Walmart, but let me tell you this right here. You won't get away with it with God. You will not make a mockery of God. He will only put up with it for so long before he finally takes the rod out and spanks you for it, amen? And I'll tell you this right here. And if you've had faced the rod of God, it's a lot worse than the rod of a parent, amen? And uh, we don't want to, we, we don't, it's not enjoyable. I'll say that right there. And uh, I encourage you right there, don't ever let it come to that place where you try to make a mockery of God with your life. Because you always reap what you sow. Lot's worldliness cost him everything, and then Lot's choices cost him. Lot's choices cost him. Lot's choices cost him his fellowship with God, his fellowship with God. So it's Lot's worldliness, and then choices cost him fellowship with God, fellowship with God. 1 John 2, 15 through 17, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the what? Eyes. And the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth, abideth forever. Lot's personal faith assured that his relationship with God was secure. And if you, if you sin, Christian, are you going to hell because if you sin as a Christian, as a saved person? No, of course not. 
So his relationship was secure, but every believer must live a separated life in order to maintain proper fellowship with God. And the fellowship between Lot and God was what? It was broken. It was broken. And uh, peace left and vexation took its place. And you know what? That's the biggest testimony toward a Christian until being a child of God is when you're living in sin, there's vexation. And, there's, and when, there, you're, when I don't have a, a, a firm relationship with my dad, my physical dad, it causes vexation. It causes some heartache. Just like for those that have kids in here, when there's not a good relationship with your kid, does it not cause vexation? Does it not cause heartache? The same goes with our Heavenly Father as well. If you sin and if you live out on the world and there's no vexation from your separation from God, that should be a concern to you. Examine yourself. See if you be in the faith. That should be a concern to you right there. And... Uh, Worldliness cost Lot his fellowship with God. Number two, worldliness cost Lot his relationship with Abraham. Worldliness cost Lot his, his relationship with Abraham. When we get away from God, it, all, it not only hurts our relationship with God, but it hurts our relationship with uh, fellow believers as well. And usually it's not because they're trying to push you away. It's usually the other way around. Where, and, we, and I've seen it, man. <laughs> Brother Tony's been here. We've seen it so often when people le leave this church. Before they leave, they start pushing everyone away. And then they start talking about, well, this person looked at me funny, and this person was mean to me, and pastor isn't treating me right, or pastor didn't talk to me, so he's probably mad at me. They just start making up all these wonderful little reasons about why the membership of this church doesn't love them anymore. We never stop loving you, amen. It's just you are, it's, 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 and Lot, did Abraham ever stop loving Lot? No, of course not. He even went to Lot's rescue, but Lot pushed him away. And that is a big testimony right there. That is a big hint. The moment you start seeing yourself separate from this church body is big warning signs. And, the and hey, guess what? 9.9999 out of 10 times, it's not, it's not the church, amen, it's you. And, I, and take that as a big sign. Take that as a wake-up call if you ever see yourself pushing away from the family of God. All right, so 2 uh, Thessalonians 3, 6, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye you withdraw, yourself, withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh what? Disorderly, and not after the tradition which he received of us. Backsliding costs a Christian not only his relationship with God, but his relationship with dedicated Christians. Sin separates. The prodigal chose the world over his family. When a Christian breaks down the walls of personal holiness, he cannot do so without breaking fellowship with his spiritual family. Hey, but just like that prodigal son's father, we need to be right there watching that road. And when they come back, amen, welcome them back with open arms as well. Because it could be us, and it has been us in the past, amen. Worldliness costs Lot his what? Someone take a guess. Worldliness costs Lot his inner peace, amen. Peace. When I got saved, I'm so thankful that, you know what, with all the turmoil in this world, all the craziness of this world right now, that guess what? I got the peace of God in my life. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something, yeah, I got peace like a river, amen. Amen. I got, I got peace, Amen. The question is, do you have peace? And the only, only, only entity that can give us peace is not the TV. <laughs> if you're watching news, and you're definitely not, you, the peace is coming out of you, amen. And uh, not the news, not our phones, not, not good food, amen, or not anything else. <laughs> not alcohol, cigarettes, or whatever else the world uses to try. It's all temporary peace with them. Uh, relationships, it's, all te it's, it's temporary. It's, it's a seasonal thing. It's a, a season of pleasure, and it's over, just like that. I'm thankful that I have everlasting peace through our God, amen, and I can only get it through God, and when I'm not having a strong relationship with God, guess what, the, the peace isn't going to be there, and we need that peace more than ever right now. If you want to be a miserable Christian right now, it's read the news and don't read your Bible, amen, because that will just drain you of peace like that and leave you miserable, and you imagine how Lot vexed his righteous soul. Lot was a miserable man. Lot was a miserable man because he didn't separate himself, and not only was he miserable because of his own life, but no doubt he saw his own family just being destroyed. But he was so mired in that sin that he just, he just couldn't get out of it. He just couldn't get out of it. All right, let's see here. Worldliness costs Lot his wife. His wife. What point is that? Four? All right. 
Worldliness costs a lot his wife, and guess what? Again, no man liveth to himself, no man dieth to himself. Every time. And if you look right here, Lot was leaving the city. Lot was escaping the city, and God said, the angels told Lot and his family that was leaving not to look back. And guess who looks back? Lot's wife did and became that pillar of salt. Epsom salt. Okay. Became that pillar of Epsom salt, amen. And she had been so, maybe he was able to pull away from that city in the end, but guess who wasn't? His wife. And I tell you this right here, our choices will always affect others, and it may even affect them more than it affected you. I'd say it affected Lot's wife more than it even affected him. Choices affect others around you. And uh, let's look at this right here. Worldliness costs Lot his children as well. Worldliness costs Lot his children. He lost his two son-in-laws. He lost two of his daughters. And... Uh, Look at this right here. Um, the carnal father and mother, think about this. The carnal father and mother seldom, if ever, produce spiritual children. You will see spiritual children come from spiritual parents. You might even see spiritual children come from the home of the unsaved, but, unwor but worldly Christians almost always create the worst possible home environment for nurturing future dedicated servants of God. Because guess what people hate most of all is hypocrisy. Saying you're one thing and then doing another. And children of all, they, know, they see uh, the parents' hypocrisy the most, amen. They really do. They see the parents' hypocr hypocrisy the most. And I'll tell you this right here. They, they, his kids had gotten so sick of seeing it with Lot that they just had enough of him. And when he come and tried to save him out of that city, they laughed and mocked him. Lot's, mar Lot's married children mocked his attempts to get them to leave Sodom. His single, girl, his single girls had to be dragged out by the angels. His sons, and yes, the angels mentioned him getting his sons, so he did have sons as well, were so influenced by Sodom that we have no record of Lot even trying to persuade them to leave. It's really sad. Here is a thought. The wicked men who beat at Lot's door and demanded the angels, could it be possible that Lot's sons were a part of that mob? Wow. That's pretty deep right there. We do know that by the end of the story, Lot's children were completely destroyed. Only two daughters survived, only to produce godless children, the product of incest with their father. Yeah. They fled up to that mountain and those two girls. That just tells you what Sodom and Gomorrah was doing, though, that the wickedness that was in that city. They got up to that mountain, and those two girls and Lot was all by themselves in a cave, and they, they thought that the world had been destroyed, basically. So their answer was, well, with our father. We'll bring, bring people back into the world with our father. That's how wicked that city had perverted that, those, those kids. Just imagine, right now in heaven, because Lot is in heaven, even after all that wickedness. Imagine his shame for the way he lived back then. Imagine his shame. All right, next point. Worldliness costs Lot his prosperity. Worldliness costs Lot his prosperity. You know, sin may, taking that job, that better paying job, may sound like a good thing at the time. The world, the, the, t the treasure of this world is so temporary, and even if you don't lose it on earth, guess what? You will lose it when you get to heaven. It'll all burn up, and the, the treasure of this life, it's so very temporary, and I'm watching my little Ford Fiesta slowly rust away, a little p specks of rust where I'm frantically trying to get it out, amen, because why? It's just a testament of worldly goods. They don't last, amen, and they don't last, and... Uh, I encourage you right here, make sure your focus is on heavenly things, not on earthly things. Worldliness, lastly, and we'll finish with this, worldliness costs Lot his reputation. Worldliness costs Lot his reputation. And it all started with one choice, church. But by the end of it, his family was destroyed, and Lot was, his reputation was ruined. You don't see anything else after that either, do you? You don't ever see any mention of Lot after that about he just, just after what he did with his daughters, that's it of him. I can imagine him just living in that cave in shame for the rest of his life. 
because of the way he had lived. His testimony completely ruined. And those kids, from, th- from that wicked sin that his daughters and him committed, they became the eternal enemies of Israel, Abraham's seed. Your choices may not just affect your kids or your grandkids. They may just go, and the sin may just keep affecting those past as well. Because sin, ha- ha- sin can have eternal consequences. You think of the abortion of our, our babies in, in America There's a reckoning coming, and it may not come in my generation, it may not come in the next generation after, but there is a reckoning coming. God will judge, and God judges sin, and you think maybe I got away with sin, or I'm sinning right now, and I'm getting away with it. Well, number one, maybe you're not saved if you're okay doing that, but there's also judgment coming eventually. If you're a child of God, guess what? There's going to be reckoning coming. Get that sin right. Stop playing around with sin. Stop playing with fire. Eventually, you you dance around the fire enough, eventually, you'll probably just do what? fall in amen yeah or burn yeah either way burn you'll be lucky if you just get burned a little bit be very unlucky if you get burned just fall in and get burned completely don't play with sin amen get rid of it it all starts out with a choice and we can start making the right choices as christians right now amen all right so i'm glad we got through that that took me about three or four weeks to go through with marie and uh so i'm glad we got through this and i'm think probably you're probably glad we got through this in a relatively quick pace amen and uh, I hope that helped you out a little bit with just some choices that we need to make that need to be better because they do affect us and others around us. Let's pray, and uh, we'll have a quick, uh, you know, not, we'll, we'll, we'll pass on the altar call tonight. Um, we'll pray. I'll have some quick announcements, and then we'll be dismissed. Lord, thank you for this day, dear God. I thank you for allowing us to be in your house tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll just give us a great, great um, week serving you. I pray we'll make right choices. Lord, as we talked about this morning, I pray, Lord, we'll make uh, our service to you our number one priority, as Eliezer did for his master, Abraham. And God, we love you. We're thankful for you. I pray, Lord, that you'll, again, give us a great week, great night, safe travels back home. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Not too many announcements. I think I've really just, Wednesday night, we got prayer meeting, amen, at 7. And then we have our Friday praise and prayer service at 7 as well. And uh, the banquet is coming up on January, I believe, 27. Or no, not banquet. I'm sorry. The business meeting. Our 20th, uh, our SRBC annual business meeting is on January 20th. Make sure you're a part of that. January 24th is our fellowship.